Ryan, what's on your radar this morning? Well, the New York Times yesterday published an explosive revelation reporting that a main financier of the assassination of the Haitian president only got involved in the operation because he was reliably informed that it had the support of the United States. But you probably didn't hear anything about that because, well, it's Haiti, but also because the Times buried it in paragraph, let's count, one, two, three, four, five, keep going, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, keep going, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, keep going, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 20, skip, keep going, 26, 27, 28, keep going, keep going, yep, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep going, keep going. If you can go back and count yourself if I lost count. 29, there it is. Okay, stop, stop on that one. Paragraph 29, here it is. He said he agreed to join the conspiracy because he was told by Mr. Badio and other plotters that it had the full support of the United States, which, according to them, was getting nervous about the president's supposed links to terrorists and drug traffickers. Quote, if the U.S. government was involved, then it was safe said Mr. Jar, outlining the th his thinking at the time. So that's awfully big news for the New York Times to find fit to print. It's also not at all out of the question. In September, the prosecutor assigned to investigate the assassination announced that the prime minister, Ariel Henry, had had multiple phone calls with Joseph Felix Badio not long after the assassination. Badio is a former uh, Haitian government official alleged to have overseen the operation. Henri responded to the prosecutor's claims by ordering the man's boss to fire him. When he refused, Henri fired them both. In the wake of that purge and the news that he was suspected in the assassination himself, the United States stood by Henri, even though he had basically no legal claim to actually run Haiti. After the U.S. stood by Henri, even after the firing of the prosecutor, the U.S. envoy to Haiti, Daniel Foote, resigned in protest in late September, saying, the hubris that makes us believe we should pick the winner again is impressive. This cycle of international political interventions in Haiti has consistently produced catastrophic results. Now, we also know that multiple Americans were involved in the plot, including an American-based security company that helped bring Colombian mercenaries in, mercenaries that, by the way, had previously been trained by the United States. So to recap, Haitian prosecutors had already recommended Henri be charged, and the Times found and interviewed the alleged financier of the operation, Rodolphe Jarre, and he said that the organizers of the, of the plot and he said that the organizers of the plot all claimed to have U.S. support. And the Times ran the claim in print, but buried it as far down as possible, giving the story a headline that made it seem like a rehash of the September news. This is one of the best examples I've seen of the paradox of the New York Times. Many of the reporters who work there are among the most talented in the world. I mean, check out how the Times reporter in Port-au-Prince, Anatoly Karmaniov, got this interview. Quote, in an extensive interview with the New York Times at an empty construction site while he was on the run from authorities, Rodolphe Jarre, a Haitian businessman and former drug trafficker, admitted helping finance and, and plan the plot. Shortly before the assassination, Mr. Jarre said Mr. Badiot told him that Mr. Henri would serve as a useful ally after the president was overthrown. Quote, he is my good friend. I have full control over, of him, Mr. Jarre recounted. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, shoot, can I? Yeah. He is my good friend. I have full control of him, Mr. Jar recounted Mr. Badio, telling him when Mr. Henri, a 72-year-old neurosurgeon, was named prime minister. Now, that's dogged and courageous journalism. He got the goods, and the goods wound up in paragraph 29, while the top of the story rehashed details that had already been reported in September. Jar, however, is no longer in hiding. On Friday, he was arrested at the request of the United States in the Dominican Republic, according to multiple news reports, including the Times and the Miami Herald. And Jar, it turns out, is a former DEA informant. The Times ended its story with one more intriguing detail. 
quote, but minutes after the murder, Mr. Jar said he received a phone call from Herman Rivera, the leader of the Colombian mercenaries. Quote, the rat is down, Mr. Jar said Mr. Rivera told him, using a derogatory code name the plotters used for Haiti's leader. The president is dead. Now, Herman Rivera, that's an interesting name. Where have we heard that one before? Ah, yes. Rivera is one of the Colombians who entered Bolivia just before the country's presidential election as part of an alleged plot by the outgoing right-wing defense minister to bring in mercenaries to assassinate then-candidate, now Bolivian President Luis Arce, the protege of Evo Morales. Leading the advance team in Haiti that ultimately assassinated the president, according to Colombian authorities, was Colombian mercenary Herman Alejandro Rivera Garcia, now held in Haitian custody. According to the Minister of Government, Carlos del Castillo del Carpio, Rivera, who goes by Colonel Mike, entered Bolivia on October 16, 2020, under passport number AV969623, two days before the Bolivian election. He came into Bolivia from Colombia via the Vero Vero Airport in Santa Cruz and stayed at the Hotel Presidente in La Paz near the presidential palace. They even had the room that he stayed in. Which raises the question, did Rivera also believe he had U.S. blessing to assassinate Arce. So some interesting news yeah, that we're getting from the New 30. York Times there. Yeah, yeah, you really have to scroll. <laughs> now, they could say, well, look, this is just the claim of a former drug trafficker and DEA informant. Right. What, what stock can we put in this? Sure, okay. That's just the on-record testimony of the man that the U.S. has arrested and in or through the Dominican Republic, claiming that he was involved with this. So we know that he was involved, but we also have all these other connections. Right. And my favorite part is there's, the, the Times has a line that says, uh, there's no evidence, except, well, there is this evidence. <laughs> but right. I, I guess they mean there's no other evidence, <laughs> and, and that the United States was involved in or aware of the plot. If, if that latter point is true, and this is kind of beside the point, what good is the NSA? <laughs> yeah, that's a good so point. you're telling me all these Americans and Colombians and Haitians, all of whom we have relationships with, yeah, can like openly plot this assassination attempt? Because there's other interesting details in the Times story about who this guy was calling to get weapons. One of them is now Henri's chief of police. Right. Uh, so you can call all these people and organize a plot, and we're like, oh yeah, we didn't see that coming. Shrug, yeah. Right. No, 100%. And there's two, I mean, to your point about how you're able to just sort of sh to shift this off and say, like, listen, this guy's a drug trafficker. It's his testimony against right. the United States government. Well, actually, the fact that he is a DEA informant who has <laughs> admitted to financing the plot, those are two extremely key details. And so his testimony th is sort of given this credibility by the fact that he right. was a DEA informant who does have some relationship with the United States government. So his claim that there was some uh, blessing from right. the U.S. government then actually, in a weird way, has a little bit more credibility because this is somebody who's actually sort of been in those circles in different ways. And he has, again, it's really important, as you highlighted, admitted to financing the plot. Right. And it's also why people like that are useful to the U.S. Right. Because... Like, well, who else are you going to get to finance an operation like this? Well, and then this you know, is how just, you, yeah. that's how you get it in paragraph 30 of a New York Times story, right? right? And th that's how this is not the front page news, because exactly that. You can use people like this, and it can be in paragraph 30 of the Times report. Right. It's, it's sort of like a, a self-negating self thing where you can say, look, hey, you're going to take the word of a drug trafficker and this assassination plot? It's like, well, what are you, you going to have the community banker, you know, the respectable community banker who's funding the Little League team, is they're the ones that are going to finance this? No, that's who <laughs> finances these types of plots. And so if you can't believe that type of person, then you can't believe anybody involved in these plots. And that's ultimately their goal, so that they have deniability in the end. Yeah, and everyone who wants to figure it out has to be like Charlie Kelly right. um, in that Sound episode crazy. of Sunny. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then you, you went full Charlie Kelly and went all the way to Bolivia. Yeah. Um, same guy. Literally the same guy. Same guy. Yeah. Same guy. No, I, I mean, it's, it's uh, raises some real right. questions. On the string from Haiti to Bolivia. Right. Yeah. Exactly. All right, we're well, looking forward to what's on your radar up next.